Friendly neighborhood inquisitors, you definitely not pause Eisenhorn Malleus audiobook to watch this stream. Not to watch this shite. Go back, listen to um, Eisenhorn. Consider it homework. You're a member of the. You're a member of the Discord. You're a member of the Thirteenth Fleet. You're a member. This is homework for all the members. Gaunt's Ghost, Eisenhorn, Ravenna, the entire Horus Heresy series, the Night Lords trilogy. This is essential reading. We know this. So I'll excuse you if you choose to dip out and not watch this part of shite instead. Hello, everyone. Is the sound OK? I definitely plugged. Look, I definitely plugged the microphone in. So it's coming through the microphone, which there was an incident. We'll not talk about it. We're moving on. How's the sound, people? Is the sound OK? Painting some blight lord blighters myself. Is that blight lord? Sound is glorious. Good. By blighters, Joseph, do you mean blight lord terminators? Sounds good. Sounds good. Hi, Carl. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Andy H. Huh. I'm not. No, don't start on the water yet. First, finish off the coffee. Coffee. The mug club. Thirty-five people in the mug club. I'm doing a mug club watch now. Thirty-five people in the world. Hmm. Two in one hit. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from. I don't. I don't know who you are. Where you're from. That's what, but whoever bought the two mugs in one hit, absolute legend. Welcome to the to the Joseph Troon Bite Boy Lords. I can type. <laughs> you can't type. No, Blight Lord Terminators, nice. They've got so many bubotic and boils and pus over. And there's a lot of details on those bite boards. You have to be you have to be careful with them. But yeah, welcome. Welcome to all my members. Welcome to everyone watching this afterwards. Welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm. We're all fine. How are you? It is Tuesday, the 9th of January. We're in 2024. Did you know the 1990s were 24 years ago? Wow. You, you may join the Mug Club. It'd be nice if you joined the Mug Club. Join the Mug Club. It makes a lovely brew. But did you know, yeah, 1994 was... Th anyway, uh, 1994 was 30 years ago, man. I don't even know if Sultan was born. It just seems like yesterday. We're going to talk tonight. Do it. Do it. Do it. We're going to ask the important question tonight. How big can it get? But before we discuss what it is and how big it can get, uh, and you're willing to, I'm willing to let you... Um, uh, suggest what I might be talking about here. I'm definitely talking about a thing. It's not very big right now, but it could be massive. But if you want to pop suggestions in the chat, I'm happy to read them. But we will get to that. First, we must do the wrap up. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? Are you okay? It's not very big. It's nippy outside. It's not that. It is not that. <laughs> it is getting cold outside, isn't it? Last week, the whole of the UK was drowning. I think we were underwater. This week, it's freezing. Joseph, you hit the nail on the head. You did. Well, that's good. See, a swing and a hit. Well done. Ah, oh, dear. Is it like a baby's hand holding an apple? No. So, um, Sunday, wrap up. Did, it, did you all watch the Legio Imperialis battle report? Was that good? Do we want more Legion Imperialis on the channel? Every now and then. Not, you know, not 40k quantity of, but I think every now and then, I think I'd like to see a bit more of it. I want to see a bit, a few more Titans and things. Did you like the Titans? Did you like the Epic? We need more Epic. Tiny Tants. You're yet to watch it. More Tiny Titans. It's such a simple, I like this game system. So at the start of the turn, you're about to take off on a flight from South Africa back to the UK. UK. Well, good luck on your flight. Hopefully it doesn't crash and burn. That rarely happens. Flying is, I shouldn't have said it out loud. Flying is a really <laughs> safe way to fly unless you're landing in Tokyo airport and you're a cargo plane that hits another plane with all the people seated on board on the thing. And it went through. Did you see that one? Mr. Potato Bar, thank you for your seven months membership. I appreciate you. Uh you forgot the Kane. You forgot the Kane series, Mister Winters. What Kane series? Oh, uh, see, Kaifus Kane. Is it essential reading? We did this last week. One of the books, book four, 
is essential reading, but is the whole series essential reading? Is it? Is it? If it is, argue your case, my friend. Argue your case. Flying is a very safe way to fly, winters 2024. It is. I stand by what I said. Flying is a very, cheers, very safe way to fly. <laughs> hmm. Uh, you got a high elves army and didn't manage to get the raw books. We're getting to that, Carl Oath Band. And you're a Carl Oath Band. You're a, you're a, a what is it? A league guy. Should be dabbling in the other stuff. Uh dear. Yeah, so uh, a few people, it seemed, like the Legio Imperialis thing. So we'll be doing a bit more. I've asked them to come back at some point. But then the old world stuff happened. So that's sort of been put on ice. So maybe another one in February. Uh, where are we? Tomorrow... For members uh, on Winter's Wednesdays, there's a 4,000 point battle report coming up, Horus Heresy one, because Kurz and Korax first met each other in battle on the broken black sands of Isvan 5. And Sam, Sam N has got the Night Lords and I've got Korax and I don't think we ran them against each other before, Primark and Primark, so we've got that tomorrow. I like doing the uh, the the four thousand point thing. That's a big one. That comes down to the last turn. Then at the weekend, uh, filmed, recorded. I need to edit it. But coming up on Sunday for everyone, Warhammer forty k. It's the Scourged Chaos Space Marine chapter, which are a canon Space Marine chapter, versus my Necrons. And I do the hyperspatial, the hyperstatic data sheet. The hypersonic. What's the Necrons data thing where you can pick stuff up and deep strike it on again? Hypersonic database. No. Hyperstatic. No. Hyperintelligent. No. Hyperactive. The hyperactive <laughs> Necrons. And that one was really close. It came down to the last couple of dice rolls of the game. I really enjoy that one. So it's going to be a tight one. It's going to be a good one for YouTube. The algorithm should love it. You guys should love it. I love I loved playing it. Hyper Bubble Buster Boys. No, it's not that, Mr. Potato But Hyper Crypt Legion? Is it the Hyper Crypt Legion? Is that how you say it? They're supposed to be teleporting around all over the place using translocation beams, dolmen gates, hyperspatial technologies and things. And uh, I do think it's a, it could be quite a competitive way to play. But it's a very fun way to play when you're... The Necrons can suffer from a bit of mobility, so ha suddenly having them move over here and move over here and move over here. Also, if you're using monoliths, and then after you've used the monolith over there, something comes spilling out of the monolith over there. Hi, Ben. We're talking about Hyper Bubble Buster Boys, Ben. Do, do you have any thoughts on Hyper Bubble Buster Boys? I have plenty of thoughts on Hyper Bubble Buster Boys, but I'd rather be talking about 40k right now. So yeah, that's coming out on Sunday. So that's a 2,000 point game. That's Skirst versus the Necrons. That one's going to be fun. The 4,000 point game, Kurz versus Korax. That's going to be fun. The new Legion Imperialis rules look good, but I can't, just can't get into Space Marine only setting. Yes, I said it before. I think it is the wrong game at the wrong time. It's the wrong game because it's a Space Marine only setting. They've just diminished a chunk of their audience. What about all the Orcs and the Eldar players out there? They were a big part of the OG epic, Orcs and Eldar. My girlfriend at the time, and we're talking back in the 90s, had an Orc army. You know, the old big lead things that you could throw a stomper at someone and seriously injure them. Um, wrong game and wrong time. It came out in the same year that they released a new edition of 40k. They should have held on to it. Bubble Butt Boys... Yeah, I know. The channel has changed. Blame Mr. Potato Butt. He started the whole thing. I don't know what he's talking about. For the better. What do you mean for the better? It's not changed for the better. You're dragging us down into the gutter. But thanks for coming along. <laughs> what was I talking about? I get distracted easily. Where were we? Is Friendly Neighbourhood Inquisitor here? Or did he actually go back to um, read some Eisenhorn? Is he gone? Heresy, heresy, heresy. Loving 2.8 in the game. It's the best game. Yeah, it's... Heresy 2.0 is a really fun, really interactive game. That's it. That's why I wanted to talk about Legio Imperialis. Because the rules in that, really, it really quite appealed to me. So, you stood there, and Timmy stood there, and you put down all your objectives first, your orders first, and then one by one you reveal your orders... 
and someone might have a charge and you might have a thing an advance and you wanted to move right but they so you do your thing and move out of the way first and then shoot them before they get before they get a chance to charge you can it was very tactical evening evening stylus woof boot chronicles is in the chat hi hi stylus thanks for swinging right i already did the thing about you i talked about like on sunday our ones coming up with the hyper bubble butt boys legion versus your scourged it was really good Love the tactical chase around the buildings. Yes, thanks for being a member for 13 months, Andy H. Yes, it was like one move, so the other move. So they're chasing each other around the microphone. <laughs> and if there was a couple more Titans, that's why I want to do it again with a couple more Titans because <sighs> there's something about that rule set that got my that got my nostrils flaring. Too much shit, not enough time. The dagger hits the nail on the head there. Like, I can barely keep my head around 40k and 30k as it is. And then Little Legions as well, and now the old world. It's, yeah. One one tough Spartan, you logged onto YouTube and see how big can it get. We're going to get onto the subject of how big can it get. We're going to talk about, we aren't there yet. We haven't ta started talking about it, or what it is, or how big can it get. You, uh, uh, so that's what's coming tomorrow heresy Sunday we've got that other one uh, tomorrow I'm filming another heresy game and we are with March of War March of War .co .uk. he's coming down he's bringing some new uh, stuff down for me ruins which we're not going to use on the table because I've already set up I just set up before I came in to sit down and we're going to do a battlefield on his fan five. Not the Urgle Depression, like a week after the Urgle Depression, because he's been frantically painting up some word bearers. And some word bearers led by Argul Tal of the Garvall back. That happened on his fan five. So here we are a week later, a couple of horizons over from the Urgle Depression. Korax on the go. That sort of stuff. Have I thought of what little legion I might do myself? Yes. Hi, the Badger King. Hi. Um... Uh, it's Rick Shazam. Rick Shazam is in the chat. Rick Shazam, the cameraman, he was here today as well. And we did some filming because people keep asking me what's happening to the 13th, right? Yeah, word bearers. Do we need measuring tapes for this next second? No, we're not there yet, the last Sentinel. Last Imperial. Good morning from New Zealand. Wow, all the way from New Zealand. We're time traveling now. It's the morning. It's not dark outside. Hello, New Zealand, where it costs three times as much to play this hobby. You know, people in America land and here complain about the cost of this hobby. But you guys in the Upside Down, not only have to, you have to deal with demogorgons and hobbits, but it costs you half a house to buy a land raider. I, I doff my cat to you, sir. Cap. Cat. I doff my cat as well. To anyone who lives in the Upside Down and plays this hobby. Mm. Yes, Rick Shazam, the cameraman, was here today. And people keep asking me about what's happening to the 13th. Where are they? What are they doing? And Rick's agreed to come back again and again. And do a three-part mini-series featuring the 13th versus the Empress Children. The first one will come out, I don't know, a couple of weeks from now. We filmed it today, but I want it to slot in closer to the second one and closer to the third one so every two weeks or so there'll be a thing and a thing and a thing and a three separate stories and i've set them on monfax in the sabbat world cup cluster why there well it's segment and pacificus and i said the 13th were being quite quiet and being quite out of the way and the pacificus was quite quiet and out of the way before leviathan happened <laughs> and uh, i am nuts deep in uh the gaunt's ghost audio series i've never i've re read it so many times but uh, i decided to rip the band-aid off and actually listen to gaunt's ghost audio series and um i'm up to book two already so it's good so it has to be on mum facts because gaunt's ghosts i didn't want to do any of the bigger worlds i didn't want it to impact after gaunt has been through mum facts uh do I think history fans and Warhammer fans go hand in hand? Um, I often find them in pairs. Uh, so when you're sniping one of them, you if you get collateral, you wait for them to walk around and then you can take out the both of them together. Yeah. Yeah. Your choice in subjects for my exams was history. 
you have a you choose i didn't choose i was just told what my hi sasha thank you for being a member for six months thank you for your new year yes it was good i'm up to some heresy mischief yes filming tomorrow you're much love from a canadian in belfast so you're a canadian but you're in ireland okay well done mega nine high winter super stream is going fantastic it's going i don't know if it's going fantastic chat is it going fantastic how are we doing i don't think we've even started yet i think we're just skirting around the edges to be honest if i had to rate my poo right now and uh, i would rate it squishy incoherent it would probably be a th properly strain and uh, when you're done you're seeing a few stars and things i like a pro i like one where you have a bit of an effort you know not one that is like stamping on a tube or moisturizer or anything uh yeah do me and Liam, Liam still stream uh no me and Liam have gone our separate ways he's doing his thing I'm doing my thing we had a goal to do content full-time and we achieved the goal and we had a dream with DZTV, but unfortunately we weren't able to achieve that dream. But we did achieve our goals and uh, he's doing his own thing now. It's only in my end, but right as you say, how's it going? My screen frozen and started buffering low. Well, that's your end. My end is fine right now. It's fine. My end is fine. How's your end? <sighs> your end's fine. Yours crashed too, just reloaded and fine. Up my end, YouTube says that that's okay. It says that that's excellent condition. I don't know what that means. Uh, it says I've got 22 likes, even though there's over 80, 80 of you here, which is confusing me. Because surely if there's 80 of you here, those likes should be at like 200 likes. The machine algorithm needs to know. You guys, I hear it on all the other live streams and stuff. And when I watch Twitch streamers, Twitch stream and things like that. And talking about likes and clicks talking about the holy algorithm myth is someone who knows how to pray to the machine spirit it's warhammer 40k enthusiasts you got 37 there we go you smashed it up there thank you if there's someone who knows how to pray to the holy machine the omnisire it's you guys honestly i'm all good am i probably a speed bump from the inquisition yeah it was probably up youtube's end but right now it looks okay it looks like we're okay 42 likes thank you very much <laughs> Uh, what experimental features from Epic, Epic or Heresy would you like to see ported to 40k 11th edition? Uh, one of the clearest and easiest answers to that that I'd like to see ported to 40k is we've got um, keywords back into, well, USRs back into 40k, such as Blast and Devastating Wounds and Lethal Hits and Critical Hits and things like that. There's three pages of them that tell you all these things. Yes. And then spread throughout the book, there's something like feel no pain, stealth, lone operative, but they're spread in other parts of the book. What I would like to see is the pages for the weapons, the USRs in one place and a couple of pages and more USRs for everything else in one place. So stealth, lone operative. Um, what's the other one? Those ones. <laughs> in there feel no pain in there but they could also put relentless in there they could also put fleet in there they can also put rending in there there's also so instead of on all the different data cards that we get saying this unit can advance fall back and charge it's called unholy swiftness this unit with a lieutenant in it can go advance fall back and charge it's called lieutenant knows his stuff this unit over here can advance instead of all of that we have a word called fleet in 40k and if a unit has fleet that means it can advance fall back and charge and shoot or shoot oh it can fall back shoot and charge so it's so much simpler that's what i'd like to see some keywords some usrs spread across all of the data sheets uh, there should be in my humble opinion a instead of every single data sheet having its own rules and some of them are the same rules each data sheet should draw from this library of rules there's two or three pages in the main rule book and it should say below this unit has fleet and it writes on the data sheet what that does 
and it's also in the main rule book, fleet, uh, full back, uh, full back shooting charge. Or, and then it writes in the main rule book, like, um, um, I don't know, Sunder. And in the main rule book, it Sunder is, uh, plus one to wound against vehicles, monsters, beasts, or something like that. It is, it, you draw it from the main book. Uh, so when you've got an arm and you say, Hey, my unit has got Sunder or my unit has got fleet or my unit has got stealth. I know what those are. And it's the same word for everyone. And it's in the main rule book and it's on my cards and on your cards and that. we do it with the shooting things for the USRs. Why can't we do it for the other rules too? Clearly we can. So that's what I would like to see. It would make the game so much more opaque, so much more. Is that the word? Opaque? Transparent is the word I'm kind of looking for. It would make the game so much more easy to read. So when you're playing against an Eldar army for the first time and you've got your Imperial Fists and the guy moves his unit round, he says, oh yeah, this unit's got stealth, this unit's got fleet, this unit's got, I don't know, quick swiftness. And quick swiftness could be, you can always advance and charge, you can always advance and charge, you can always advance. So, all right, my bikes have that when my captain joins them. That gives them and his unit quick swiftness or something. And it's all from the same thing because everyone's got the same rules anyway. They're just named 78,000 different things apart from the weapons. What do you think? That's what the way Mantic Firefight does it. Well, there we go. That's the way Horus Heresy does it. That's the way That's the way they used to do it in 7th and earlier. That's the way they brought it back in 10th edition for weapons only. And that's one of the things that they could port from Horus Heresy to 40k from 7th edition to 40 Look, they did it with the weapons and it took them two editions to say, okay, we screwed up. We need to have something like that in there. Let's give them another two editions before they go, okay, we screwed up. We need to have something in there for all the rules, for all the other things that we've got. You know, that's what I think. What do you think? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Would you like to see that in Warhammer 40k? So a, a, a Bible of, a library of terms, just as large as, on, only as large as the shooting section from the Warhammer 40k rulebook or would you like to see something different or what ideas would you like to see ported, ported across to 40k from other systems that you've seen work USRs just work makes sense to me a lack of universal rules is one of the reasons why you left 40k yeah that would be perfect yeah so they brought some 40k USRs back for weapons why not bring USRs back for that you left 40k and embraced the narrative gaming of 30k nice um yeah yeah they're expanding though aren't they you've got the 40k you've got the 30k you've got uh aos you've got old world it's like we're gonna have two major sci-fi systems heresy 40k two major fantasy systems nothing will be 40k though it's uh concise easy to understand rule book it'll never catch on a concise no it won't will it imagine having a concise easy understand rule book how could we ask for such heresy adam you went to warhammer world in nottingham it is a yeah we call it mecca amongst the seos amongst our gaining group we've got to go to mecca at least once a year <laughs> yeah man. it is glorious there uh You've been around since second edition and you can't believe you didn't start 30k sooner is mental. See, that's what I, Sasha, if you've been around since second edition, uh, I found there's loads of people who are old school players getting back into the hobby or getting disillusioned with the current state of 40k. And I say to you all, I say to you all, try Horace Heresy because it's an uh, it's imprinted, it's built on the ruins, it's built on the shoulders of giants, it's built on the foundation of those old rule systems that you used to play back in the day, so you'll find it easier to get into, it will sing to you, and the meta doesn't shift and float around all over the place like it does in 40k. For example, they released the books, they released the codexes, and they the 0 0.7 changed, <laughs> and no more. It, it's the same as it was launched 18 months ago as it is now imagine if they did that for 40k they dropped an edition with some indexes and some rule books and they didn't touch it for 18 months the whole world would lose their minds huzzah 
been a member for 12 months. Thank you for your 12 month membership. Has it been that long? Um, hi, Mr. Winters. What's your favorite model in your collection? Also, hi. Hey, hi. Hi, hey. Uh, Reva Titan is really good. <laughs> that one is a fave of mine. I'm loving the Primarchs. Um, I'm loving the Primarchs. It changes. It changes. I look at this one. I look at that one. But Korax looks so beautiful. Horus looks so beautiful. The new Angron 40K model. I'm proud of the paint job I managed to pull off on that one. I think I managed to wrap him in steel. I did an extra layer of shading below the null. I null oil wash most things, which is a cheap mode. And I know serious painters hate it. But I did an extra layer of shading below the null oil. And then I did an extra layer of shading on top of the null oil because he's a Primark. And I really like the look of Angron. I, I like what I did to him. I like his pose. I like, yeah. Primarks or Reva Titan. Uh, there isn't a bad Primark model, honestly. Is there? I mean, 30k Gulliman, and 30k Dawn. They're not bad. They're a bit static. Fingers crossed we get an Emperor model. Do you think they will? I want to see a Malkador model first. Because Malkador took part, sort of, <laughs> in the heresy here or there he was involved he threw some lightning bolts around i mean Lorgar punched him once it'd be great if they dropped a malkador model like strength three toughness three six wounds eternal warrior three up invulnerable save some sort of thing psychic power that he does and the reason why he's 600 points is if he pulls off his psychic power your whole army gets to re-roll hit rolls of one or something uh, his f unparalleled foresight. I think there could be a Malkador model. Uh, did I wake up in time for the last fight? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, Malkador model would be amazing. Malkador's model would just be little piles of white dust from Red Dwarf. <laughs> Khan sucks because he has no bike. Yeah, the Khan. That's a that's a Primark model that sucks. Why has Khan not got a bike? Please give him a bike. Khan on a bike. Come on now. Why have white scars in 40k? Why haven't they got jet bikes? Why? That just doesn't make sense to me. If there was the one legion that would have made sure that they kept hold of that technology, that they'd have protected that technology. I mean, often um, legion homeworlds had forges dedicated to supplying them. And McCrag has a ton of them. They should have jet bike technology. Come on now. What is your opinion of Legion's Imperialis so far? I said it back at the start, actually. So, uh, but basically, it's the, it's very tactical. There's layers of tacticalnessness in Legion Imperialis. I've enjoyed what I have seen so far. Um, yes, but it's the wrong game at the wrong time. Why doesn't he have a bike? Because he can't. Car. Andy, you need to go and sit in the corner and think about what you did there. <laughs> okay, right. Let's finish off my coffee. Mug club. Cheers to the mug club. 35 of us now in the entire world. Mm. We move on to the water. Bowl water. What do you mean it's the wrong game? It's the wrong game because it doesn't, it's it's set in Titanicus, it's set in heresy times. It should have been set in 40k times, or at least after the heresy. It should have dwarves and elves and dwarves and orcs and things like that in it. So it's a Horus heresy game, not a 40k game. So it's the wrong game. And it was released at the wrong time. It was released in the same year that a new edition of 40k dropped. Which is just, yeah. Because they did mention that if Legion Imperialis does well, they'll add more factions. What like, mm, we'll see. See, so, scouring rules soon. They're going to release scouring rules, are they? Because if they release rules for the scouring with Legio Imperialis, then that's a way to have Orcs and Eldar back in it. I just remember playing a lot of Epic back in the day. And um, one of 
my friends had Eldar, my girlfriend at the time had orcs. Uh, I had space marines and imperial guard. And uh, yeah, I never played against another space marine army. No, but it'd be cool. So when you say last uh, scouring rule soon, soon, what you meant was no, <laughs> no scouring rules. But it would be cool if there were. That's what you're saying. Speaking of mismatching, you're mildly annoyed that the twin lightning claw Terminator Captain for Space Marines has gone. You can't play Tiberius for my Kakar Kakardnerons anymore. <laughs> can't he? All right. Okay. Well, now technically, what do you mean? Scouring will soon. No, would it be cool? Technically, yes. Oh, yeah. So, right. What about a new edition of Battlefleet Gothic? Yeah, I mean, they've seemed to have re-released every single game system they've ever done. So I think we can see Battlefleet Gothic coming soon, right? <laughs> I think that's coming. We've got Adeptus Titanicus is back. Legio Imperialis is back. And then this week, they announced with all the release and all the stuff of Warhammer The Old World. And this is what we're here for tonight. We're 33 minutes into the stream. How big can it get? How big can it get? How big can Warhammer the Old World get? Because I'll tell you this. Here is my first... I want to... How, your impressions. How big do you think it's going to get? Is it going to get... Space Hulk? Yeah, Space Hulk. We need Space Hulk back. Is the Old World going to be bigger than AOS? Is it? Maybe. You see, I'm on the internet. Hello. <laughs> People message me with loads of stuff, so I get lots of messages. And then I've also got my massive members, my lovely members, the 13th Fleet. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for supporting their channel that way. If you've chosen to, thank you. It keeps the lights on, and it's why we're here this evening. And in the Discord, they chat a lot. And they chat a lot about lots of things. And then I get the messages and I speak to people and I get it. So I get a good sense of how much buzz there is out there compared to before I, when I wasn't on the Internet. When I wasn't on the Internet, I, I didn't have much of a sense of big buzz. But now I'm on the interwebs, I get a sense of the buzz. And the buzz for Heresy when it came out was high. The buzz for Legio Imperialis when it came out and all the words and all the messages and all the things wasn't as high as Horus Heresy. The buzz for 10th edition when that came out, lots and lots of buzz about it. Uh, the buzz for any AOS drop when it comes is quite high. But the buzz and the messages and the streams and the people for, AO, uh, for Warhammer the Old World has been really high. Really high. Did they sell out of all the box sets? Carlo Bound, thank you for your two-month membership. If they can keep up with demand before the hype dies. Yeah, so have have they sold out of all the things? Did they sell out of all the things? Have I got that right? I'm pretty certain it was all sold out within two minutes again. You um which gives you an idea of just how much hype and just how much interest there was was in this game system, just how many people are talking about it, how many people wanted to come back to it. How big can it get, people? Have they sold out of the boxes? Am I wrong? I have a sneaking suspicion that in five years' time, ten years' time, Warhammer the Old World, two years' time, could be bigger than AOS, the system that replaced it. And AOS becomes... you know, It's not, not like Heresy is ever going to be bigger than Warhammer 40k, right? Because Warhammer 40k is the tent pole, is the morning glory that holds up the Games Workshop roof and that... Everyone talks about even the normies, right? And the heavy Henry Cavell is interested in 40k is even people who are normal know what Warhammer 40k is. You ask a normie about AOS, they've got no idea. But 40k is always going to be bigger than Horus Heresy. But can the old world be bigger? Will it get how big can it get? Everything. What does that mean? Everything sold out by day one, other than Cetra. There you go. Boom. You wait for ages for a buzz, then three turn up at once. Yeah. Those people who predominantly play this hobby are now the generation that started with the old world and now have the disposable income to make those armies that we dreamed of at 11. It's preach, tabletop, divin and natatas. Yes, there are a lot of people coming back to the hobby. A lot of people who play Warhammer Total War 
I like I want to buy all the lizard men. I don't know if they're being supported. I want to be able to buy all the Chaos Dwarfs. That's been legended as well. That's definitely not being supported. I want to buy lots of Knights. That's being supported. And they can spend the hobby. Spend the hobby. That works. Comes back. Does Buzz translate to sales? Um, well, that's a good question. Yes. <laughs> there is. There is a link between Buzz and sales. The more you hear about something on the internet be it a new release movie, if it's everywhere and everyone's talking about it for months, then you might go and see that movie. And if it's a movie that comes up and disappears again, and then someone says, oh, did you see that movie three months ago? And people say, what movie? And it was The Colour of Water. And you're like, what? I don't know what that... It's gone. So Buzz does translate, indirectly does translate to sales. Um, the number of people who are talking about it, the number of people who wanted, who who commented about trying to get the new army, the number of people, that, yes, it does. Like, um, the buzz for Legio Imperialis was really high until everyone found out it was Horus Heresy and then it dropped away a bit. Uh, and then the number of people I know personally that have got that system is in the tens from... My, the members that I'm looking at and the people around me and the number of people I know who are interested in the Warhammer Old World is in the hundreds. Uh, so it is the original game. It's got some tweaks to it, hasn't it? It's the original game with some tweaks. Are you looking forward to doing your first Old World Bat Report? No, I'm terrified. It's... <laughs> I've played that game third edition? I mean... I remember playing that game in 85, 86. And I remember stopping playing that game in 87, 88 because Rogue Trader came out and then Epic came out and then Space Hulk came out and time is a thing. So, and I didn't really play the game properly back then because, I mean, you know, I was a, a wee little lad and, and couldn't get my head around all the rules. So it's been 35 years. <laughs> since i played that game uh so no i'm not looking forward to filming it it's gonna make my brain melt i hate that there's so many of the old models re-released that's a good question yeah they're releasing a lot re-releasing a lot of old stuff legending and vaulting a lot of old stuff as well and in the old stuff dropping some new releases here or there so they're basically relaunching 80 percent of what was out before now, you say you hate that there there's so many of the old models that are re-released because 80% of it is what was at before. But then I've spoken to a lot of old world people who are looking at their armies thinking, I can play this now. I chatted to Stylus the other day. He's got four old world armies of around 4,000 points of pop and he could field them now. So yeah, it sucks, but it's also good. Particularly if that model range, if 20% of that model range is going to get vaulted and they're going to add... 20% new stuff over time to that model range, you know? You think Old World will probably die out? Because Games Workshop won't be interested in giving it proper support. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, if brick and mortar shops push it, and demo games and Games Workshop pushes it for events, they might have a chance. If brick and mortar shops push it, and Games Workshop pushes it, for events hmm don't know maybe uh sorry i'm out of actively playing warhammer for some 25 years with the old world now will the old world now replace aos or will they simply exist in parallel yeah I d how big can it get will they exist in parallel will it get bigger than aos I'm not sure if it can get bigger. It might get bigger than AOS. It might get bigger than AOS. There's a lot of chatter. People like dwarfs and elves and trolls and orcs on a map, on a board that they can see in a world that they can see instead split across many different realms. It's the multiverse problem, right? Once you have a multiverse or a multi-realm thing, then you remove any stakes because that realm could die but then this realm over here could happen. Its stakes just go. You need a place. You need 
it brings it down to a human level that we can actually comprehend. And it's classic. It's orcs and goblins and demons and things, you know. You're excited to see how my battlefields are going to look for the old world. Well, they're going to look very boring, the battlefields for the old world. Because you need... I like the lot... I, when I set up a battle, battle report, when I set up a, a table, I go to it with the idea, not less is more, but more is more. So when I'm finished, I tend to add more. <laughs> I, I like it to look like a proper battlefield. I like it to look like a, I, I see it like a painting and there's a picture frame and in the picture frame, this is the scenery that I'm setting with the hills or with the ruins or with the statues or with the things. And then we're going to play inside the picture pane with the, that's, I like it. And like next door, setting up tomorrow's game took me a good hour to tear down the table, put up a new table. I like it. Uh, but for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, you need open spaces. <laughs> Because of the rank and file stuff, you need a couple of hills, a couple of trees, done. Maybe a river. <laughs> you can't put too much down. Uh, also, there's not as much shooting. And also, there is... The shooting is bad. <laughs> Let's just scaven. There's a lot of not hitting and not wounding. Uh, it is a close combat, charge, retreat, that sort of game. Or it used to be. And the version of the rules that are coming out is a similar version of those rules now. So the battlefields need to have the space to move around. Everyone was talking about AOS when it happened. And now the sentiment seems to be reverse. Um, yeah. Well, the community needs to welcome as many players as they can. I'm not... We need... Yeah. Play 40k your way. Enjoy whatever system that you want to enjoy. Play whatever. It's it's your hobby, your money, your time. Seen a lot of things in the OS forum saying no to the old world. They can exist together and provide cool new models for each other. Of course they can. Just like 40k and Horus Heresy. It's a clear, it's a clear intention from Games Workshop to have a accessible sci-fi system. 40k and an accessible fantasy system aos which are similar to each other and have two older legacy systems one for sci-fi horus heresy and one for fantasy old world so new players come into the hobby play whatever versions of whatever games they want to play it's more likely than not that they'll transfer into 40k or aos first and then if they stay in the hobby over time, because those systems change and change and change, 40k meta is changing all the time, the AOS changer meta is changing all the time, it's highly likely that the old world meta will stay as stable as the Horus Heresy meta. As I said earlier, Horus Heresy came out 18 months ago and it hasn't had one new miniature, well, it hasn't had a meta change, it hasn't had new... The points are the same and the things are the same since when it launched. Except for there's been a couple of expansion books with a couple of units like Aramancho Terminators and Fulgrim Clans. Okay, there's been a couple of bits dropped in. But it's, it's, a, it's a largely stable system. And AOS and the old world, I think it's going to follow the same pattern. I think they're going to try and draw people in with AOS and transfer them across to the old world if people stay in the hobby for longer. But how big can it get? Can Warhammer Fantasy, the old world, be bigger than OOS? Do we think it's going to be bigger than OOS? Most people seem to be think no so far. Most of you guys seem to think no. I'm thinking it can, it might. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it might. Because there's a lot of buzz about it. And Warhammer Total War video game is big. And people like orcs and dwarves and elves. And there's a lot of you old bastards out there who want to come back to the hobby and don't want to fly drop ships and things and Kakaradon or tree monsters. You want to fight with your knights against some orcs using gunpowder that's likely to blur up in your face. If they run a global campaign for Old World, that'll probably do it. They are never going to run a global campaign for Old World. They're going to release it like they did Heresy. It's going to come out. There's going to be some hype for it. There's going to be some boxes for it. And they're going to sit and see what it does. And there'll probably be a few more boxes for it. Like we've got the big boxes. 
And then next month, there'll be another box or something, maybe not as big, but smaller boxes. And each month, they'll, like they did with Heresy, suddenly there's a car and tanks, and then this tank, and then that tank. And they'll drip feed a bit more into the old world hobby and see what it does over time. And if it does well over time, that will, hello, go for it, paint. That will uh, inform their direction because Games Workshop chased the meta as much as 40k players. <laughs> They chase the next quarter. Must get to the next quarter. Must get to the next quarter. There's people coming back. There's people coming from Total War. There's new people in the hobby. As long as they price like Heresy and give it support, I've got faith in it. <laughs> yeah, Heresy is cheaper than 40k. See, Total War. There's people from Total War who want to play Old World. I know. I mean, Mikey from Hellstorm Wargaming. Check out Hellstorm Wargaming YouTube channel. Mikey from Hellstorm Wargaming. His... He came into the hobby through Dawn of War. I mean, we played Dawn of War, right? We all played Dawn of War. Not Dawn of War 3, obviously. But Dawn of War 1 and 2, classic games. If you haven't played Dawn of War 2, homework project. If we're all fleet members, go and play Dawn of War 2. It's probably free on Steam right now or on Xbox Game Pass or something. Go and play it. It's a lovely game. You'll love it. If it's been ported to Xbox, don't know if it has. There's lots of people. He's a direct example and a whole his whole thing came through dawn of war i know a number of people who got into 40k because of dawn of war how many people would have got into warhammer the old world if it actually existed as a game you play dawn of war 2 one but not two dawn of war 2 is good yo you give it a go man it's very good don't play dawn of war 3 they screwed it up they tried to turn it into like a starfield sort of thing uh, they just they got away from what it was did you come back to the hobby after a break and what brought you back in would be an interesting survey. James Gascoigne, I can tell you that 9 out of 10 people came back to the hobby out of a break. 9 out of 10. I meet a lot of people at events and things, ask them, hey, how are you in the hobby? They'll say, well, we started here and then got into sex, drugs and rock and roll. And then now they're a bit older, they got money, they come back into the hobby. Most people are like that. There is a smaller percentage of people, it's about 20% actually, about, yeah, yeah, about 80% of people came back, about 20% of people are in it for the first time. Dawn of War got me into Tau, best faction. Well, at least you didn't say Elder. Get distracted by D&D, &D, drinking games, exactly. You've printed a huge set of Dawn of War scenery for your local games club? Nice man, it will be very, very cool to see it on the on the tabletop. It seems to me, as one of the old bastards that want to return to the hobby, I'm better starting off with AOS though, as everything is already out. Have more choices and balancing is good. Um, well, it depends. If you're an old bastard returning to the hobby, um, you probably have a chunk of miniatures already, which are designed for old world and the rules for old world include 80 percent of the miniatures that you have right now because they vaulted some of them uh so the easiest way to come back would be just get old world and do that and you've probably got the miniatures right away uh but aos is is more accessible yeah you're in that category sex drug rock and roll and then sexy warhammer i know man um so far, I mean, the small percent have got interest in the eighth edition and started collecting the ninth. Yeah, yeah, you're in the you're in twenty percent. I would say Sultan was like that as well. Sultan got interested in it and then came into it. I do talk to a yeah one in five people that I chat to, either in the members or come and see me or at events, have just started through lots of different sources through lots of different media. But eighty percent of people are returners. Yeah, new edition of AOS this summer. Really? Is that right? So this year they would have released 40k. Well, last year they released 40k. And then Legio Imperialis. And then they're releasing Old World. And then they're releasing AOS. All in a 12 month period. Really? And then we're going to have two years of no. See, this is screwed. You'd think they would release. If they've got four game systems, you'd think they'd really... And we don't want to see refreshes of Old World or Heresy as quickly as we want to do AOS and 40k. It seems like AOS and 40k get released every three years now. So you want an AOS and 40k game 18 months apart. The release is there. 
and then the old world and the Horus Heresy, any major launches in those systems should be... Ah, oh dear. New edition of AOS this summer. Is it really? I said that already. My brain. COVID hobbyist here kept me sane. The Badger King. You're coming to see me at some point, aren't you? The Badger King? Are you? The Badger King? I've got Badger up there. I don't think that's you. I think that's a different Badger. You are the King of the Badgers. Thanks for your views. I'll pay my joke with GW Vizio. Let's see where I'll end up. Yeah. Um, yeah, CL. That, go to Games Workshop if you have got miniatures and you're interested in getting back into the... So there's a number of old bastards that I know that have got back into the hobby. I've seen people come and go and come. And go. So in my personal gaming group, there's some people who came back in and started playing 40k again and they're returners and then they left again. But a couple of them have come back in again to play Heresy because keeping up with how fast things go on AOS and 40k is you need to ride that wave. If you if you want to stick on top of the hobby, you really need to stick on top of the hobby. Or you and your local gaming group don't have don't care about the wave because you've got your book. And it's one or two codexes. You've got Tau and Guard and your other... You know, they've only got a couple... And it doesn't matter what all the other stuff is released. It doesn't... Because you're only interested in two armies. They're only interested in two armies. They're in, so that's another way it works in local gaming groups. So either you need to stay on top of it, the, the meta wave shifts, or you don't have to care about the meta wave shifts. Either of those is good. And then you can drift and stay in the hobby and drift and surf through the hobby. Like a penguin down a swift a glacier... You can you can you can slide all the way through the hobby really easily without worrying too much by keeping on top of it or sliding. Um, but coming back in from an older edition, Total War, not Total War, Old World or Heresy is easier and a more stable particularly if you're going to be a more casual-ish sort of gamer and only play it, do it for the collection point of view and only play it maybe once a month, once every couple of months. Ah, way too many changes too fast. I know, right? More Warhammer, more often. Do we really want more Warhammer more often? What they should do is pace it out. More Warhammer more, more often would be okay if they paced it equally out across all four game systems, which it looks like they want to do. But then they won't do that. They won't stick to that that thing because 40k is the cash cow and they've got to chase the next quarter and chase the next quarter and drop the next thing and drop the next thing and drop, which is why they're never really interested in repairing too much. If they destroy stuff and break stuff, like the Eldar Codex broke everything and they nerfed it and it still broke everything and they nerfed it into the ground and it still broke everything and they've nerfed it three times and it's still breaking everything and winning everything and they don't bother going back and it's just because well just get to the next quarter next to the next quarter next to the next quarter power armored penguin and slide and hit every walk on the way down you know what i was thinking of dicky when i was thinking of slide i was thinking of fight club you know my spirit animal penguin just slide when they released the still sniper for admech that's the point i felt it had gone too far <laughs> yeah uh, yeah yeah little timmy's supposed to see that and go i want that sees an anger on the shelf sees a reaver titan on the shelf sees a tank and go yes that gets you see the things in the shops mind you little timmy doesn't leave the house anymore does he the internet of the 21st century is the shop window of the 21st century is the internet. Little Timmy sees it on the internet. And you want little Timmy to see the anger and all the tank or the thing. And little Timmy to go, I want that. And when he sees the big stilty and go-go gadget, he's probably not saying that. Stuart Fields, thank you for your, for your donation. Thank you. I appreciate you. And you're from New Zealand. It's 10 New Zealand dollars. I don't know how much money that is in real money. You already spend far too much money on this hobby, Stuart. You're in the land down under. You're not though. You guys hate them. They hate you. You're in. You're in the upside down. Um, and this hobby already costs you three times as much as it does the rest of the world. But so I really appreciate your donation. My any advice for avoiding a hobby slump? I can feel myself sliding downhill lately. Painting was usually one of the things that would help avoid that, but it seems too difficult right now. Um, okay, two bits of advice. 
First bit of advice is this is your hobby, this is your escapism, this is your personal time. And you shouldn't get beaten up by a hobby slump. If you don't feel it right now, that's fine. <laughs> and if you don't want to do anything right now, that's fine. And if you really don't want to paint or do the, that's fine. Um, so one, don't let it beat you up. Your escapism is your escapism and how you want to spend your time is up to you. You should, what you should do, what I do is actually I ask myself, what do I really, what do I want to do? And if you want to play um, Dark Tide, if you want to play Dawn of War 2, if you want to play Halo, if you want to play some video games instead, go away and play some video games instead. If you want to read a book, go away and read a book instead. If you just want to chill, watch Netflix and chill, then do that. Um, that's fine if that's what you really want to do. Uh, what I find though that helps me with my Hollywood projects because I'm looking over there at the third because last time we were sat together chat I said I painted two of my own warriors or five of my a couple of my own warriors I've done 30 I've done 30 of the beggars in the light what I do is I get audible um, you can listen to YouTube stuff while you're painting away uh, you, you can listen to Bat Reports and Luton's lovely voice and uh, or other YouTube channels while you're painting away. But Audible is really good for a like the Night Lords trilogy, for example. That is 40 hours of content right there. And it's immersive. Um, the Solar War, the Horus Heresy, the Gaunt's Go series. I would recommend getting is picking a series of books. Eisenhorn picking a series of books and saying okay uh, this is a series of books I really want to read this is a series of books I really want to uh, and getting them on audible and that's you time that's hobby time when you're immersed and you're sitting there and your phone's next to you playing away for a couple of hours and you're painting away that will get you back into the hobby quite quickly that will that does that help uh, hopefully that helps that's that's what I don't get fatigue. I mean, I do get hobby slumps every now and then. It's, it's quite rare, though. I'm quite anal with these sorts of things. There was a period when I, when Dawn of War, no, Dark Tide came out on the Xbox. I smashed that hard for like a month, six weeks, and barely did any painting. Um, and it's just only over the Christmas period that I've got back into the painting thing. Uh, and to help me get back into the painting thing, Gaunt's Ghost on Audible for the first time. Uh, and... Yeah, listening to it all the way through is going to be epic. I know I've got over 100 hours of listening to smash my New Year, New Army, Iron Hands project. Joseph Troon, that's what he does. Stuart Phil, thanks, mate. It's just not the best start of the year so far. Onwards and upwards, hopefully. Um, man, sometimes you roll a bunch of sixes. Sometimes you roll a bunch of ones, man. And sometimes it doesn't matter how many times you roll the dice. You're going to roll some ones and ones and ones. Yeah, man. So, yeah. You're, you will, hopefully you're still getting downtime, hopefully you're still getting hobby time. And if you are, what do you want to do when you switch off? Do you want to play video games? Do you want to paint some miniatures? In fact, if you're having a bad, bad start to the year, get an audio book. And say, right, I'm going to, I'm going to put some hours aside each evening to treat myself to an audio book. And while I'm sat here listening to it, I might as well paint something. Just started Wheel of Time for the third time. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like I've read Gaunt's Ghosts, I don't know, six times, I want to say. The last few books, the Victory series, uh, I read the first couple like three times, and I've read Anarch and Warmaster twice over. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like I never listened to them on Audible, so going through them all on Audible, and I love it. I've been told, it's all Toby Longworth, which is really good, but I've been told that two of the books are not by Toby Longworth, so that's going to screw me up, because I've got used to their accents now. Always paint with Audible, says uh, Pickle Nick. Uh, just finished Eisenhorn's first book. Nice, man. Before that, Night Lords trilogy. Nice. And before that, The Whole of the Horus Heresy. Nice. So yeah, you've got to do Eisenhorn. And then Magos before you do Ravenor. Because he did Eisenhorn, Ravenor, then Magos came out. But Magos is the short stories and it fits between uh, Talon Wishes Fort Thorn. is sort of like the link short story between Eisenhorn and Ravenor. So do the Eisenhorn trilogy, then do Magos. It'll do some short stories for you, plus the link one. And it fits in about there in the timeline. Then do Ravenor, then go on to Bequin and oh, 
That's a good series. Toby is so damn good. Toby Longworth and the other guy. Who's the other guy? There's Toby Longworth and the other one. There's two really good narrators and they know how to smash it out of the park. Just started listening to Krieg audiobook not so far back. Yeah, I did the 28 minutes one. That was good. 28 minutes would recommend. And um, Dead Man Walking. Dead Men Walking is good. Would recommend that one as well. Warhammer Regiment Command Groups. Is it Champion Standard Musician or Standard Champion Musician or Musician Champion Standard? Warhammer Regiment Command Group. Is it a Champion Standard Musician or a Standard Champion Musician or a Musician Champion Standard? Well, it's all three, isn't it? You have a Musician Champion Standard. You have all three. Does it matter which order? James Gasgoyne. I've recently been doing hobby videos, doing video calls with hobby pals as they live in London. Uh, unfortunately, being based near Reading means I'm in a hobby black hole location-wise. Reading? Hobby black hole? No, man. There's a couple... Um, where's that massive power station near Reading? <laughs> There's a couple... Of, fuck. What's the name? Apologies. There's a couple of groups in the Reading area that I'm aware of. You should write Facebook it up or something. You'll find them. Um, or, James Gascoigne, if you are a tier two channel member or higher, then go in the Discord and hit people up in the Discord in the looking for game section. And the thing about if you go in the looking for game section in the Discord, put a thing in there. And then a couple of weeks time, put a thing in there. And then a couple of weeks time, put a thing. Someone will catch that hook and you'll get a game. Again, I was talking to Rip Shazam today and a bunch of people today who only play and have only met up through the looking for play section of the Discord. It has really helped tie the room together. It really ties the room together. Name that movie. I like the Mark S. Dobb. He narrates the Aramans. It does it. Okay. Uh, I think there's also a painting voice chat in the Discord if you want people to chat whilst hobbying. I don't think we've got a painting chat in my Discord, and I keep meaning to do that. Jonathan Keeble, that's the one. Jonathan Keeble and Toby Longworth, those two are superstars. You're in Warminster, and there's nothing around here club-wise. Warminster. I mean, the looking for games thing is quite... Hmm, Okay. What's your opinion on Old World? Saw you shout out about it. I think it's old and I think it's a world. And I think these two things are very important because when you have a multiverse where there's loads of different realms and dwarfs and spirits and tree men everywhere doing everything, you've completely lost a sense of stake because nothing is in one place, everything is all over the place, and it doesn't matter if this thing dies, because there's another one over there, another one over there, another one over there, another... And when you have an old world, well, not only is it old, but the important part is it's on a world with a sense of steak, a sense of pork, a sense of chicken. That river could be polluted, that mountain could erupt, that city could be ruined. It gives it history. It gives it, it gives it steaks and cucumbers. That's what I think. James Gascoigne, try being in a small coastal town in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, dear. There's an active club in Maidenhead if you're on that side of Reading, says Sam Nash. Sam Nash is in the chat. There you go, James Gascoigne. If you're on... If there's an active club in Maidenhead, if you're on that side of Reading. And if you're in the Discord, James, hit up Sam and he'll tell you where it is and how to get there. There we go. Pulling the world together. The Big Lebowski. He nailed it, man. <laughs> the Big Lebowski. Did you know they're making the a sequel to that movie? They're calling it The Bigger Lebowski. Yeah, it's a movie looking for a hero with intrigue toes murder and he's just a completely dislocated disinterested hero to the discord <laughs> nice so how big can it get people how big 
can the old world get? How big? On a score of 1 to 10, I want in the chat, is it 1 for tiny, 10 for really big? How big do you think? 10 for bigger than AOS. 10 is bigger than AOS. 9 is the same size as AOS. 13. 13 doesn't... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my lucky number 13 10 being bigger than os 9 being the same size of aos how big can the old world get 13 6 4 8 5 8 3 mark h you're 10 sash is the first one to go over 8 10 is bigger than aos 9 is the same size as aos how big can it get warhammer the old world. 42. Well done, the bobbins. 13, 6, 4, 8, 5, 8, 3, 10, 8, 8, 8, 6, 7, 7, 42. 3, 8, dropping to 3 after 2 years. She'll be bigger than 11, 20. Welcome to my 11st birthday. The people yearn for dwarfs, but you can't play Chaos Dwarfs. They're right out. They've been legend. Okay, so... Where were we, where is the average there? Were we saying so? Nine being bigger, nine being the same, ten being bigger. Sasha's optimistic. Some Sasha's as optimistic as um, Mark H, who's not optimistic at all. <laughs> half empty kind of guy versus half full kind of guy. We seem to be floating around the five, six, seventh mark, which is pretty big. Which is pretty big. Six. <laughs> JJ Murphy. I read you six, dude. You did the six and did your six again, okay? That being said, oh, Sasha, 10. That being said, I'm not buying it. (laughs) Dicky, big medieval battles rather than skirmishes. 10. (laughs) Yeah, big block thing, infantry stuff. It's a different kind of player. I mean, AOS is... AOS. See, I've seen AOS played a couple of times. I've got involved with AOS a couple of times. And the reason why it didn't bite me... Is because I was looking at it all the time saying, I might as well play in 40k. It's a very similar game system. It's I, I prefer having lasers than throwing squigs at each. Let's do the 40k thing. But Warhammer Fantasy with the block mechanic and charging and cavalry lines and things. It's hmm. Cost and old sculpts won't bring new players in. It's flying high on nostalgia. Well, old sculpts will bring... Oh, new players in. So the cost is high. Old scopes won't bring new players in. The old scopes might bring some new players in, like the returning players who only had a handful of miniatures, 10, 20, a few boxes of stuff when they were younger, when they were 12, when they were 14, and they fell out of the hobby. They got some skeletons, they got some orcs, and they fell out of the hobby. And they're coming back into it and having a look. And those old sculpts being the same sculpts as they remember, go, oh, that might bring... There's a percentage of the audience there who might think, ah, yes, at least that's good. And also those old scopes, I think one of the reasons why they've kept some of the old minis in there is because of Warhammer Total War. It's because of that big video game. People play the video game and they want to get the pipeman. So they look and there's the pipeman. Play the video game and they want to get the Black Orcs. There's the Black Orcs. People play the video game and they want to get the Teslas. And there's the Teslas. And they get the Teslas. Um... So I think that's why they've done that. But as I said, they've vaulted a chunk. There is a lot of recycling going on. There is a lot of recycling going on. But they've vaulted a chunk and they're going to be releasing some new chunks. So, lol, spot on Horus Heresy first, then Old World. (laughs) AOS is 40k light, is it? Yeah. I think the market is saturated and the cost is too damn high. You know, that's the other thing. They're competing with their own market share, aren't they? I mean... The 40k players, the AOS players, the Warhammer Fantasy. How big can that market be? How many players out there are there? Are they pulling people away from 40k to this game system? I think the market is a lot bigger than we think it is. And the dawn of 8th edition showed us that. The dawn of 8th edition, their shares... Uh, their, their shares didn't double double their shares went up by 10 a hundred times you can see the share prices before eighth and then after eighth it's like a cliff edge and then it's fallen off again quite a bit but um not as far as it was before <laughs> it, the number of people who got back into the hobby the number of casual gamers out there the number of people who've got armies and bits and pieces just sat there 
there's a lot more of us geeks than you realise. Henry Cavell is one of us. One of us. One of us. Maybe. Maybe he is. He's one of them too, but he's also one of us. He's one of them famous, shiny people with proper jawlines, perfect hair. He's one of the people that my wife says, hey, if Henry Cavell ever wants to come around here and play for Warhammer 40k, you don't even ask to ask. You can bring him straight in. He's one of them. He's high on his golden throne. He's one of us too, though. You just notice that the Tomb King box here is listed at $578 in your local gaming shop. Is that good? Is that bad? JJ Murph says you play all four systems and enjoy them all. Really? You play Heresy, 40k and AOS. And you have time to play them all. And you play the old world, even though the old world hasn't existed. Hmm. The big hands, Karani skellies are still at work. Stuart, what do you mean? Is 578 good or bad? What does that mean? I think Total War Warhammer helped, is helping with the old world. I think it did. I think they probably wanted to kill Warhammer the old world. And then Total War, <laughs> Warhammer Total War came out, I think in the same month or literally within months of them blowing up the old world, Warhammer Total War came out. And Warhammer Total War is so successful, we're on to Warhammer Total War 3. And it's still big, and it's on the internet. And lots of people watch that on the internet being played. And Dawn of War would be there too, only they screwed it with Dawn of War 3. Dawn of War could have been doing 1, 2. Dawn of War could have been what Total War is. That's 5.5 tanks of petrol. I don't know what that means, Stuart. You're like 578 New Zealand dollars. Ah, I noticed that it's too... Is that too much for you? Too little for you? It's 5.5 tanks of... I don't understand. Uh, I've still got loads of dwarf lead list, blister packs from my when my go James Workshop sold them off at 50p each back in the 90s. Man, I remember buying miniatures for 50p, Carl Oathbound. I remember getting on my bike with the boys we'd get on our bike on a saturday fiver in our back pocket cycle into town about 45 minutes lock the bikes up and go around town and spend hours in town on a saturday with a fiver this is back when town centers were busy because there was no internet and people actually left the house um and with that fiver you could get a mackie d's you could get some glue you could get a pot of paint and you could get two blister packs and it'd be a grand day out and then cycle back home again and uh, cut your fingers open on the lead and blood everywhere. I mean, back, oh, that was glorious, glorious days. It converts to 283 quid if that helps. Yes, it does. Thank you. Wow. 283 quid for a box of Tomb Kings. Well, at least it's got the rule book in it as well, I guess. 283 pounds. People complain about how much it is to stay in the hobby over here. They have no idea of your pain, do they, Stuart? No idea. Bring back lead. No, don't bring back lead. <laughs> you can't convert anything. in it. Well, you can convert things in lead, but then you need surgery afterwards and stitches. You still have tons of old fantasy miniatures, chaos dwarves and dragons, dragon ogres and a ton of stuff. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe total war. Total war. Maybe the old world is for you. How big can it get? My community says six. I don't know what that means. But they said six. And six in German is sex. So that's a good number. So on that note, we've had a good chat. I've been online for an over an hour. I like to smash these for at least an hour. Catch up with you guys. I'll be here every single Tuesday doing Talkie Tuesdays, except for the Tuesdays when I'm not here. And then there'll be an STD instead, spreading some STD love amongst the community on the Tuesdays. Don't know when we're next filming an STD because Warsmith Chris is due to hatch. And when he's got little hatchlings running around all over the place, he's prior to the hatchling and after the hatchling, he's got lots of nest building to do. So uh, it might just be me for some time. <laughs> but Talkie Tuesdays are the days to 
come along and join in. That's between 6.30 and 7.30. I normally sit down. Winters Wednesdays are the videos just for the members who help pay for everything and keep the lights going. And the reason why there are free videos for everyone else in the first place. So thank you, everyone who chooses to be a member, who chooses to support me that way. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. My videos and any other video that you like on YouTube. It really is currency. It is blood for the blood God for us YouTubers. Help feed that machine algorithm, the spirit, the, um, the, um, God, my brain, the machine spirit, <laughs> the Omnissiah, uh, please. Uh, anyone that you like out there, anyone that you love out there, give them that little click. It means a lot. And, um, on Sunday, 2000 port game between the scourged Chaos Space Marines and the hyper bubble boys of my Necrons. Looking forward to that one as well. I really need to edit that one. I'm not going to edit now. It's a bit late. March of War coming around tomorrow to film that 4000 point game. Salt one's coming around the next day. We're doing Space Hulk. So I can't for Friday. I'll edit it on Friday for the Sunday. <laughs> Thank you. Click like thingy Bob. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks for being here. I've got to do that one there. Happy War Gaming. Thank you. for, And I'll see you next Tuesday. No, that's rude. See you next Tuesday. Well, if you come back next Tuesday, I will see you next Tuesday. But uh, happy War Gaming.